Okay, so I haven't had the best experience with MOBAs in the past. But even so, I was still very excited to try out the new MOBA, Pokemon Unite. I mean, sure, there is a possibility that I'm going to get flamed by my teammates because my Pikachu skills are absolute garbage. But man, the possibilities of the Pokemon that could be added here just gets me hyped. Plus, how hard can it be? I mean, not to toot my own horn or anything, but I am a renowned Bug Pokemon League champion after all. Just saying. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking. Ugh! Pokemon Unite? I was waiting for a Legends Arceus Nuzlocke. Pokemon Unite is pay to win. But I think the only reason you say that is because you suck at Pokemon Unite. And you're also shirtless. But we're always shirtless. So let's fix your indecency with today's sponsor. Chimera. Chimera is a clothing brand that prints amazing designs with only high quality materials using manufacturing practices that are both ethical and better for the environment. Do you like dragons? Do you like space? Well, their designs got a whole lot of dragons and a whole lot of space. I may not know what this astronaut is pointing at, but it looks like just an absolute blast. Here's a thought, dragons in space. Game changer. My personal favorite was this anglerfish design. I mean, it's got vivid colors, feels really comfy, and look how nicely it fits me. It's perfect. They also have regular shirts, hoodies, jackets, and more. And in the small chance that you have a sizing problem or issue with your item, you can even get a full refund. Be sure to check out Chimera.com and get yourself some neat, comfy, and affordable clothes and use the code YONG at checkout to receive 10% off your purchase. And huge thank you to Chimera for sponsoring this video. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about my first run with Pokemon League of Legends. So there I was on Aos Island, ready to make my Unite debut with my very first Pokemon, Talonflame. The objective of the match is very simple. There are three lanes, top, center, AKA jungle, and bottom. The team that scores the most points within the time allotted wins. Easy, breezy, cover jinx. The teams were lined up, the crowd was cheering. It was time. Normally this is the part where I just absolutely embarrass myself completely due to overwhelming complexity, but I'm telling you, when that whistle blew, I surprised everyone. Myself included, because me and Talonflame were popping off. We were winning fights, scoring, and before I knew it, we won our first match. Wow, John, how do you explain your amazing performance just now? All right, I got three possible explanations. One, it was much easier to get a hang of because the rules were very simple. Two, all those league skills I was supposed to have learned finally kicked in and gave me a huge advantage. Or three, I have a gift. Again, it could be any of those things. I mean, yeah, there's also a good chance that my opponents were complete MOBA noobs and eight-year-old kids. But I mean, if you ask me, then maybe they just needed to, uh, oh, I don't know. Get good! because I destroyed them, and I will continue to wipe the floor with their precious Charmander. As you can see, my initial experience on Aos Island has been in absolute blissy. Lots of great things. I obtained more Pokemon that I can use in the arena. I even got Jerry back, and look at this skin I got for him. Holy crap, that Crustle was really strong. Can't believe we actually got away, but it's okay. I think we're safe now. Yippee-ki-yay, Nuttercracker! Oh, fuck. If sniping faraway enemies as Decidueye, Galio ulting across the map as Dragonite, or swooping into a fight and totally annihilating everyone with a guard chomp in a detective costume nicknamed Some Cool Guy isn't awesome, then I don't think you know what awesome even really means. And you know what's also really cool? You don't even have to worry about being flamed by your teammates because there's no text chat. Just simple commands and pre-made messages to send to your team. No room for toxicity whatsoever. You know, I think all MOBA games should adopt the same method. Solves all our problems. So yeah, things have been going very well so far. But soon, I would be one shot smacked into a wall of humility by Mr. Mime because soon after, those very same MOBA noobs that were my opponents would soon be my teammates. And before I knew it, I had many matches where this would happen. Uh, hey guys, uh, anyone wanna help me with this? We kinda need it. I just need someone to either help me take this objective or, or fend off the opponents before they get, oh, 
Good. Never mind. All right. So who wants to take the jungle? <sighs> I wish that was the extent of my suffering, but no, no, it, it gets worse. Because if you know anything about a game that involves the cooperation of others, you know that eventually you will run into those kind of trainers. Specifically the kind where the words teamwork, cooperation, and just common sportsmanship decency is just not in the vocabulary. And unfortunately, it seemed Aos Island was just filled with them. Like, I don't know if this is some quote unquote I will carry mentality or wide eyed innocent newbie that didn't know any better, but please stop taking the jungler camp if you're not the jungler at the beginning of the game. Whoa, whoa, wait, what the heck, man? What are you doing? I need that. Ugh, man, I really wish there was a way I could like ping them or call them out and tell them specifically to stop. Oh, now I see the problem. Everyone, we need to talk about this. I know we all want to be the star of the team, the one that makes the biggest impact in the game. But if someone already called dibs on the jungle roll, it's fine. Just let them have it. You can get it next game, champ. But taking their stuff just puts them and your whole team at a disadvantage, and they will most likely not like you. I know I don't. So let's all do our part and hashtag support your friendly neighborhood jungler. Don't take their camps and respect the dibs. Nah, screw dibs. I'm going to do whatever I want. Screw dibs? You, you thing. Oh, you manaphy. Another kind is what I call the glass trainers. They're like any other trainer, but a bit more, uh, fragile. As in, one bad outcome equals game over, and they just want to give up. Like, okay, I get that it's not fun to be stuck in a match where you are losing, but don't just get disheartened after, like, one bad fight, and then constantly start pressing the surrender button. You only need to suck it up for 10 minutes, maximum. Like, just be glad we're not on the summoner's rift right now. We would have to suffer for hours before they finally put us out of our misery. The reason I say don't be so quick to surrender is, as many seasoned trainers would say, it's not over until that legendary bird becomes glorious fried chicken. And it's very true. Like, I've had many games where we are just straight up losing the entire time. And of course, someone is spamming for us to surrender. But then, the rest of us somehow managed to pull together, win the fight for Zapdos, score a bunch of points, and ultimately win the match. Excuse me, but uh, I think you and your losing mentality belong with that team over there. Eh, but to give them credit, most of the time they're at least participating to some degree. Unlike these, I wouldn't even call them trainers because they don't do anything. That's right, either they just sit at base doing nothing, or even worse, just farm wild Pokemon, jungle buffs too, and that's it. Why are you like this? Like, does this intrinsically fulfill you somehow? Do you like being disgusting? Ugh, seriously. And I know I should be promoting more positivity instead of being so judgmental even though sometimes they deserve it. But I feel like I'm allowed to be at least a little frustrated at some of the realities that I guess some people just find purpose in doing nothing. And that others just don't respect the dibs. And that you can try your dang darnest best, but in the end, your team will just surrender anyway. All I can say is, is I feel sorry for all those poor Pokemon that have to take orders from these bean curds. I guess whenever I'm frustrated or tilted because of my teammates, or myself, I'm not a perfect player either. I always ask myself this question to take my mind off things and cheer me up. And that is, what Pokemon would you like added? I know, it doesn't sound like something that should make me feel better, but I mean, it just gives me hope of what could be. Like for example, it is super depressing and honestly a huge crime against humanity that Jerry is the only bug Pokemon in this game. But then I keep imagining how amazing, no, how tofu-tastic it would be to have these fine specimens of the bug boys added to the island. Scorch, Volcarana, Kha'Zix, <laughs> I mean Scyther, Golisopod, Drapion. I know he isn't technically a bug type, but he really is a bug on the inside. And I think that's what really matters. I don't think I'm that far off when I say, it's really what the whole world wants. And I would main any of these Pokemon in an instant if given the chance. Step aside, Jerry Grievous is here. See, feel so much better already.
In conclusion, for my experience on Aos Island, I've had a lot of bad matches. <laughs> Some a lot more infuriating than others. And I'm sure I will continue to get my hopes up for the next Pokemon release, only to be disappointed. But I've also had a lot of good matches. And even though they aren't bugs, I still have fun using the other Pokemon too. I still believe Pokemon Unite has a lot of potential. And as long as I continue to enjoy the experience, it's enough for me to stay. And if not, I guess I could always give League of Legends another shot. I wonder if my skills will transfer. Hmm. Okay, there's a good chance that people might start thinking that I'm switching over to become some kind of Pokemon YouTuber. No. It, it just happened to be a topic that I was like, oh yeah, that could be fun. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like drawing Pokemon and making videos about them. It's just, I don't want that being the main thing. I got a bunch of other things that I have planned that I want to do not related to Pokemon. So let's just get that out there. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. And a huge thank you to those that joined my website over at theyoungongtales.com. We got a lot more exciting stuff coming over there soon. I promise. But uh, yeah, that'll be it for this end card. I will see you in the next video. But until then, continue to stay safe and stay young. Also, sorry, my allergies are kind of kicking up. So that's why I might be sounding a little nasally right now. Yeah. Okay, bye.